This lecture is an introduction uh, to existentialism, the philosophy of existentialism, and its implications for education, or an existentialist philosophy of education, which is based upon this particular rendering of existentialism and education is based upon the work of Van Cleve Morris and, and Maxine Green, two noted philosophers of education. And I am Dale Snower at the University of Toledo. We can begin with what Van Cleve Morris refers to as the existential predicament. And this predicament is one where we take the position, naturally we take the position of the absolute value of our own, of our own life our own self, our own existence. And um, we, uh, this is a natural uh, position to take that, uh, to recognize the value of our own life. However, this is in juxtaposition with another perspective, which is the perspective of the universe. The universe itself does not require our existence. Uh, and therefore, from the perspective of the universe, one's ex existence is insignificant. So we have here the juxtaposition of the absolute value of our existence, the absolute value of our lives, juxtaposed with the, its, abs, our absolute insignificance. This is the existential predicament that we are of a value both at the same time we recognize ourselves of, as of absolute value and at the same time of absolute insignificance if we take the point of view of the universe. And this predicament, if we become aware of it, and if we recognize the existential predict predicament, this prompts despair, anxiety, uh, longing, uh, etc. Uh, the common response, as Morris suggests, is that we attempt to find acceptance in others. Uh, we, we give ourselves over to the beliefs, the values, the recognition of, uh, of others, in, uh, including various kinds of social groups. But from the existential point of view, we have to, the existentialist point of view, we have to take on this predicament head on. Uh, and we have to, from the point of view of existentialism, recognize that uh, essence, purpose, per, our, the, our essence, our purpose, our value are not given. They are not structured in our existence, uh, in who we are by birth. Uh, they're not in, value is not inherent in the universe. There is no independent moral order of, of good and right in the universe. Uh, we, do, we are not uh, innately programmed as such uh, by the universe. But our essence, our purpose, and our value, therefore, uh, can only be constructed through choice. And this is what existentialists refer to as the priority of existence. It, we have to, they argue, we have to awaken to the recognition that we are responsible for our own lives. In choosing and making choices about who we will, who we want to be and have reason to value, uh, we choose who we will be. As Morris suggests, if there is no, and I quote, if there is no a priori meaning, then we can creatively assign meaning to life, end quote. And this is captured by the phrase, existence precedes essence, this idea that our, our existence in the world uh, precedes our essence and our essence is created or constructed through our choices. And the aim is to be authentic. The aim is authenticity. 
to freely choose and to take responsibility for that choice and thus take responsibility for who we are as individuals, as persons. So authenticity, to be authentic, requires that we make free choices about our lives and we take responsibility for those choices. We take responsibility for who, for who and how we define ourselves. On the, uh, the opposite of authenticity is bad faith, and bad faith is being inauthentic, uh, not freely choosing, and or not taking responsibility for our choices. Existentialism also recognizes that there's an inherent anxiety, or angst in German, inherent in free choice, that free taking uh, recognize our, our freedom and our responsibility for who we become um, is implicitly anxiety producing because of the awesome responsibility that that entails. Furthermore, there is uh, the exist what is what Morris refers to as the existential moment. And this is a moment of becoming aware of realizing that I am a person, that I exist. The recognition, the realization, becoming aware of one's existence is the existential moment. And that moment places one in the situation of choice and responsibility. Becoming aware of one's existence, be realizing that one is a person, a free person, places one in a situation where one must choose to be who one becomes. One can give up this choice but through conformity to the dictates of others and thereby avoiding responsibility and the anxiety that that might entail. We might, as Eric Fromm once put it, we, want, we have a tendency, human beings have a strong tendency to, to attempt to escape from their freedom in the sense of not, will, not being willing to bear the awesome responsibility of, of choice of who one becomes. Thus, the existential moment gives rise to, the, to an existential situation where, to quote Morris, the only imperative is that we recognize that what we do count for will be determined by what we say with our lives. So how we live our lives, what we choose to become, what we choose to value and act upon, uh, is a statement about human value, is a statement that we are making to others and to ourselves about our nature or our essence as human beings, an essence that is constructed through our choice. This uh, philosophical orientation or perspective has, has significant educational implications. And following Morris, it, in terms of the purpose of education, uh, Morris argues that uh, the edu edu existential perspective requires a release of the human self, that education should be devoted to releasing our human capacity for choice and responsibility and not, uh, not uh, social integration as such. Uh, much schooling revolves around the integration of future members of society into their society, into their culture. From an existentialist point of view, that 
uh, that purpose would take second seat to the release of our human self. And that entails the cultivation of self-awareness, which is becoming awake to oneself and the world, to become present, to be able to be present and awake to oneself and the world. And this is essential uh, for the existentialist, the cultivation of self-awareness, what Maxine Green, as we'll see, refers to as wide awakeness. Furthermore, Marcus, Mor Morris argues that uh, a fundamental purpose of education should be the development of the capacity for moral judgment. Moral judgment is necessary to instantiate our freedom and our moral responsibility. Pedagogically, uh, Morris argues that uh, the school, the educational experience, provide personal experience and reflection in school, in the educational process, that pedagogically the uh, education should involve a pedagogy of reflection. And that is presenting and reflecting on the ultimate questions of life, including ethical questions and problems, that students should, from this perspective, be presented with the ultimate questions and given ample opportunity to explore, to engage in inquiry, to reflect on those questions and the ultimate questions of life include basic ethical questions and problems. For example, what, what, would, what should constitute a good life? How do we conceive the good? How do we conceive a good life? What would make an individual's life fulfilling? Uh, what would uh, lead to the best kind of life? And following that, what would constitute right relationships with others? What would constitute a just and fair society, etc.? Uh, these should be these kinds of questions and reflections should be at the heart of the educational process from the perspective of existentialism. Turning to Maxine Green. Uh, Green noted and celebrated a philosopher of education, 20th century philosopher of education, that uh, from an existentialist point of view, education is for wide awakeness or should be for wide awakeness. An education, we should have an education oriented to, to wide awake being in the world, that is being present in the world the cultivation, education first and foremost, should cultivate our capacity for being present to ourselves and being present in the world. That we confront the world as conscious, self-aware individuals, independently of what she refers to as the crowd, that is the the conventional point of view, that we become conscious individuals as individuals and not primarily as members of groups. Uh, being present in the world, being wide awake, entails also understanding what it is to exist in the world, and that entails fundamentally a consciousness of one's own freedom becoming conscious that we are free beings and being, being conscious of our freedom, we, uh, uh, we become aware of our responsibility for ourselves, for the life we choose that defines who we are. So at the center of education is the idea of wide awakeness, the cultivation of wide, wide awakeness, becoming self-reflective, which entails an awareness, being able to be aware of one's own awareness, being able to step back and to 
become aware of the contents of our choices and uh, what those choices entail in terms of our responsibility. Green maintains that through the arts, in particular through literature, uh, in particular existential liter literature, is a means for cultivating a self-awareness. Uh, literature cultivates the reader's own subjective awareness. Uh, and that enables one to see reality and to act in, in relation to that reality in an authentic way. Literature provides an opportunity and moves readers to reflect upon themselves and their relations to others. And this reflective capacity is a kind of seeing, an authentic apparatus apprehension of oneself and one's world. Literature promotes sensitivity and awareness and the real intensified realization of meeting. As Green wrote, a literary encounter can be an encounter with the fundamental drama of an individual's life. Literature enhances our capacity to see, to be aware, to be present to ourselves, others, and the world. Quote, imaginative literature has the capacity to awaken human beings to their condition, to make them aware of their awareness, to, pre to be present to themselves, end quote. Further works, quote, works of literature offer visions of possibility to the existing person. That is, it opens up possibility. It can enable an individual to explore his inner horizons, to reflect upon his own consciousness and his own known, knowing. Such reflexive consideration of the activity of his own consciousness may have the effect of freeing the person to understand that he, living in a historical situation and acting on it, has constituted the meanings of his own experience. It may have further effect of freeing him to understand that he is the one who must go on constituting the meanings by which he lives. So may reflective consciousness become the ground of learning in many fields. Conscious of himself, presence to himself in the world, the individual can reach out in many directions to develop cognitive perspectives for the sake of ordering his own life world, end quote. Therefore, attentiveness, the capacity for contentive, uh, being, a, being attentive and the cultivation of wide awakeness is of, of high value. And that uh, capacity, that state of being and becoming is central to an existential conception of education. Education from this perspective is or should be devoted to the cultivation of self-awareness, of being present in the world, of being wide awake. And that is cultivated ultimately through processes of reflection, which art, literature, philosophy, among other disciplines, can cultivate uh, profoundly.